Okay. So, hello everyone, and welcome back to University Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that because we do live like real. Anyway, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, uh, this is um, this is uh, we we have we've been away in the UK for a while, and um, yeah, we just we haven't had any content. We didn't want to just put out stuff for the sake of putting out stuff, uh, but we think this is going to be really really helpful because um, this is my sister that you all know from the previous video, this Hi. is Ginny, this is uh, her husband Zach, Hi. and um, obviously thank you for all the lovely comments where you all pointed out how Ginny is much better looking than I am, <laughs> and, um, and how, oh, wow, didn't she get all the good looks, so thanks for that, I really appreciate that. Uh, so anyway, this is about um, Ginny and Zach's journey to Buying a midlife crisis. Exactly, <laughs> journey to a midlife crisis. <laughs> so this is this is um, <laughs> this is uh, this is a video about their journey to buying property in Portugal. Whether you can buy property in Portugal in five days, which um, the, the, there is no answer yet, but um, it's looking quite good, isn't it? It is looking good. It's looking better now. It's looking better now. This week. It's, we've had three weeks of worry, three weeks of lots of emails and to and fro in, but we're still like that, hoping it's going to go through. It's, um, it's starting to look a, but it's a, starting to look a okay. bit better. Yes. So it's, it's fair to say that um, there's been some bumps along the road. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and thanks to you and your video and all the bad things that happened to you, we've learned from your mistakes. They're the best mistakes to learn yes, from the yeah. ones other people make. So, this is why I've been watching all the Portuguese or <laughs> expat videos, just so I can avoid all the pitfalls, hopefully. Yeah. So the, the number one pitfall of making sure you've got the land that you think you're buying huh? is listed. <laughs> yeah, we know that one. We know that one. The pictures came through and it's like, these don't look quite right. Well, actually, one of the reasons why we chose the property we chose, because we heard about your problems, and I thought, well, I'm going to get a walled property. And like, there can be no ambiguity, you know, like, here are the garden walls. Surely everything that's inside the garden walls are mine. Oh, no. That's not okay. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay. Fact, you, the you, parts of the garden that weren't even on there at all. You can have all, all the property. garden all the way around that's walled. Yeah. But your front courtyard and the, the pathway to your front door isn't included. Yeah. Okay. But that, that could that have been resolved now. Has, we think has now been resolved. We hope yeah. it was just a, you know, this probably has been in the family for a uh, hundred years and so no one's ever, and even you know, the people who've got it now have just inherited it. So it's never gone to the camera or the camera or whatever you call it. Camera. The camera. Yeah. And so, you know, this is the first time this has been flagged up. They then, they've just realised, oh, you know, apparently we don't even own the yard. So we've got that sorted out. So... We're hoping this is all right, but things do move slowly in Portugal. They do, yeah. This is um, this is. Which is what you know. One of the reasons why we're moving there, we're hoping to move with that pace when we get there. But when you're living at England uh, pace, and there are the clock is ticking over here for us, we've got to get out. Mm -hmm. We've got things that've got to move, which maybe we'll get into in a bit. But and this is another thing about Ginny is um, she's far more organised than I am and, um, and, more than I and am. far more driven and um, organised and uh, yeah so just on the side now can you stop squeaking your yeah I know I'm sorry I should put some three and one out shouldn't I <laughs> <laughs> what can I do he's uh, a fidgeter just, just, just as long as everyone thinks I'm breaking wind <laughs> it is the chair <laughs> so um, so guys why did you decide to move to Portugal I'll let you answer first really why did I decide? I didn't decide really. Ginny decided. She put she put it forward, and I was really, amazed. really. I'm quite I'm quite surprised. Oh, I am. Yours. I was quite surprised. Yeah. So this was your initial idea. Yes. Yeah. Because earlier on when you were talking, I was thinking, right, well, you had the idea, and then you no, you no, make no, the no. plan work. It was your idea. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm quite, I'm shocked, viewers. So we've, well, yeah, we've, we've we've watched your videos. Well, this is the thing. The lockdown happened, and then you sort of suddenly Ginny said, Nick emigrated to Portugal and I thought oh, that's a bit left field and maybe he's having a nervous breakdown I don't know midlife crisis <laughs> I mean he might be I don't know I'm not a medical man <laughs> but <laughs> but you know you went off there and then we started watching your videos and then because of the uh, algorithm of course if you watch one of your videos then you yeah. get a load of other videos and you start watching I thought this looks really nice <laughs> 
I thought, maybe I'll have my own midlife crisis. And I just, and then uh, we were just watching it. We were, it was a pipe dream. We were just watching your pipe dream, really. And then Ginny says, why don't we go and do it? I'm like, all right, well, we don't want to get into my despondency at the moment, but I've just been sitting in my office. Yeah. Waiting for life to happen. Yeah, just waiting, just trying to outlive my mortgage, really. Mm. And I was just bored with life and work. You know, you tell me this, the same thing, years and years, you just... And then the moment she meant, she said, do you want to go to Portia? I'm thinking, oh, God, yeah, that's the thing to do. However... That would, you the, know, the a connect- challenge. That's a challenge. The connection is you spent every, all your summer yeah. holidays... I have got a very vague connection to Portugal. In Portugal. Mm. In Portugal. Uh, so my, you've got family members in Portugal. Yeah. Your brother. My stepmother, there. my stepmother is Portuguese and I lived with my father and stepmother between the ages of eight and 16. So that sort of period of my childhood, I was brought up by a Portuguese lady and consequently we went every holiday because she wanted to go back home to see the family at least once a year. And they were sort of holidays. We'd go for six weeks and stay with a, you know, we weren't having two weeks in a hotel somewhere. It was six weeks in a family house and so we got to know so I got embroiled in it quite a bit. So that's the connection, but it's like, hey, this looks really good. We could go and buy a house there and we could... Well, I never thought... Do it. You know, we had been looking at a house. We've been in England. We'd, um, you know, we've got a little tiny mortgage on this house, relatively small mortgage to the you know, value of the house. And we were looking for something, a little investment, and we were trying to buy something over here. And we were looking around and we just could not believe the price of property in England. You know, we couldn't touch it really. We only, you know, we're not rich by any means, and we, but we just wanted a little, a little income. But we couldn't find anything. Fair on retirement. We just, you know, we just gave up in the end. So, you know, we renovated this house a bit, and then the the idea of this came up. And then whilst also while you were out making your videos, of course, after you've watched a few videos, the next step is to start looking at estate agents, and then you start, oh, and then you start thinking. Then I was actually introduced to a completely unique situation, that of actually being able to afford properly. Mm. It was a completely, it was a revelation to me. Mm-hmm. I was looking at stuff that, and I wasn't looking at, I mean, you can buy swanky, expensive stuff, as you know. We set ourselves a little budget, didn't we, of about 50K. Yeah, 50,000 euros. 50,000 euros. Was budget? I went, why don't you go do a rapper? You know, that's kind of what, because I'm literally going to walk away from my job as well. A bit like, you know, yourself when you go there. Mm-hmm. And I'm not leaving. I'm leaving the home. I'm leaving my job. Although what's left of my job after the, you know, the lockdowns, and whatever is, oh, you were not worried about leaving that. But uh, yeah. So I need a little income, or you're officially retiring. Yes, I am in Portuguese terms retired according to the banking system in Portugal. They don't know what self-employed builder is apparently. I didn't come up on any of their drop-down categories menus. So they just said, you will be retired. I'm going, what, 55? Retired? <laughs> it's the dream. So, so you mentioned that you watched some other YouTube channels. Yes. You, yeah. Which other channels have you been watching? The I mean, Indigo. Okay. Let's get some much for much. It's all the Indigo Project or the Project Indigo, Project Portugal, Portugal Project. It's all a bit Judy and people's front, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they've just been, you've been bombarded after. Yeah, it. just, well, if, of course. If you like this, then you'll like this. Exactly. Okay. And I do kind of, now that I am interested and I've got a vested interest, I've actually, you know, we're in the process of, I'm even more interested. And so, because I don't know anything about building a Portuguese house. And, uh, it's different. I can see that. Yes, it's different. <laughs> and we don't live in a climate really where some, you know, things eat your house whilst you're living in it. We saw a photograph, uh, Sarah shared a photograph last night of a Capricorn beetle larvae. And uh, it's the size. Oh, I've seen one. It's the size of a clipper lighter. Yes, <laughs> the size of your thumb, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and they basically they just they just eat through. Sorry, that's um, Sarah. She's behind the cam- she's camera lady today. Yeah. Say hello, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. So so yeah, it's um it's definitely different, and also builders merchants are different, and you know they do things differently. And I can see they don't open. So. Are they don't. Yeah. You know, well, of course, that's a, that's a one year. It's intimidating going into builders merchants in England. Mm-hmm. Going into one where you, you don't, don't speak, speak the language. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and also, they don't, I mean, you don't have an address out there, so could you deliver it to a vague, a village? <laughs> with a yeah. postcode. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, we, we have a village, a village oh, with a postcode. We know yeah. this one. Yeah, exactly. Well, we didn't until we like, this is the address. <laughs> this isn't an address, this is a vague, you know. 
Yeah, it's a town. <laughs> yes. It's a town. It's a village. It's a town. It's not even that it's close. It's a, a town. It's still right. It's a village way. near a town. Yeah. So you have a postcode. Yeah. yeah. Which covers everybody else in the village yeah. near, yeah. near the town. You, yeah. just, you just have to stand watching, uh, waiting for something that looks like it might be a delivery. A and then just wave frantically. Yeah. I'm going to put my own sign up, I think. <laughs> That's a good English thing. people this <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so we've kind of covered what's inspired you. Um, yeah. It was YouTube, and yeah, also, it was YouTube. also, and also, pop well, it was you. I've, and, I've, I've, I've always thought I want to retire somewhere warm. I hate the long. I hate winter starting in October and finishing in April. Mm -hmm. I hate that. I, I like to be outside doing gardening, doing stuff. So I've always thought I'd like to retire somewhere warm. But just didn't really know where. And every holiday we've had is like, oh, you've got to go and see if this house is oh, so lovely here. But Portugal, after watching your videos, it's like, yeah, that's that's for us. So, guys, have you been learning the language? We've been trying. We've been trying. <laughs> um, and, and so, so what sort of what sort of things have you been doing to learn the language? I've got the Drops app yeah. on my phone, and I do fifteen minutes every day. Wow. Of just words. Mm hmm. And I still forget them. Yep. Um, I've also been watching YouTube videos on how to teach yourself Portuguese. Okay. Um, Ginny bought me. Uh, I bought you some a sort seat, of some CDs. Yeah. Something, which I kind of like, but it's all the usual, you know, like. I want to a, buy get a to the train, train station and have an ice cream. It's not, it's not really, much to do with yeah. builders' merchants. But. I'm hoping that going there, I'll remember in the supermarket. I'll remember the words for the things I want, and it's like oh, I know that one, and and. If I learn, forgive me, I'm English, I'm trying, then hopefully... Yeah, that's the most important yeah. one. Yeah, uh, yeah. now follow Portuguese. <laughs> now follow Portuguese. Now follow Portuguese. Posting out is a good idea, though, Sarah. It's, yeah. it's a great idea. Sarah, Sarah just suggested that we, you, which is what we did, we put post-it yeah. notes on everything okay. around the house. So, so once we get to our house, we will. Be Franco. Cha. <laughs> there we go. No gosh, too sharp. Things of this. What's what's so? What sort of things scare you about the moon? Um, having to work because when I go, I'm going to have to have. An Are you talking about the the moon or like just no, moon? No, just no, no, yeah, yeah, what, what, Having what to sort of, work um, whilst Zach is doing the house around me. Okay. Because I have, I'm relying on having to work. When I'm there, so I'll have an office. I'm relying on you having to work whilst we're there. We're both relying on me having to work <laughs> whilst we're there, and then Zach doing the work around me. I can imagine ceilings falling down, and I've just this bit's fallen off, or and and me trying to maintain a calm, zen like. I just let me finish my working day, love, and then I'll come and help. Okay. That scares me a bit. Okay. But I'm not scared about being there. No, am I. About learning. Trying to talk the language or being in a different location. I suppose the language is the. I so think the language is the key. Once, if you, you know, you can really integrate and feel that you're already part of the community once you're, once you know what's going on around you, and you have to be able to, even if you're not talking to them, you have to be able to just be able to hear what's being said or what's being communicated. Creatures in the forest, we're on the edge of the forest, the javelin, marauding through. Okay. And fires. Okay. That, so, that would worry me a bit when I get to the summer and the forest fire season. <laughs> so you're doing this on a D7 visa? Oh, yeah. Well, we're trying and okay. hoping. Trying yes. trying to do it on a visa. So can you talk about um, the process of applying for a D7 visa, the requirements, um, and how you found doing it yourself? Because you, you did... Hang on a second. You yeah. did... Um, you were going to pay somebody to yes, do it, yeah, yeah and uh, and you thought this is something that I'll, I, I can do myself. No. Okay. I watched a YouTube video um, of a lady saying this is what is entailed in a D seven visa, and thought, right, I'll never be able to manage all that. So I sent her an email and said, could you possibly help? What's involved? And she said it's very complicated. Um, we charge three thousand euros. If you would like, to, I will send you the details. Oh, cripes. That's a lot of money, mm. 3,000 euros. Yeah. So I looked again online, went through Google searches, looked, trying to find reviews. I'm a very great one for reviews of people who've used immigration specialists. And I found a company that seemed to be 
spoken about a lot on the internet, contacted them, and I had a half hour free um, Zoom meeting with a very lovely lady, she was very helpful, and said, yes, we'll send you a quote, and that was 3,000 euros. And we thought, well, maybe this is the going rate. So I said, I want to know we've done it right, we're buying a house, we're putting everything on hold, to the, everything's on that we can buy this house and live and work there, we need to make sure this is right, so we'll have to pay that fee. And then we went over budget. Did we? On buying the house. Just a little teensy wincy bit. <laughs> and it meant we might not actually have enough money left <coughs> to pay for transporting all of our possessions to Portugal, including okay. the dog, and doing the visa, and paying the taxes on the house when we bought it. So Zach said, you're good with paperwork, love. You can do that bit on your own. Like <laughs> you did. <I> did. <laughs> So you know you like doing post, post offices, playing post offices. So you <laughs> stamps and filling in little boxes. Ticks. So I then spent a lot of time researching on Facebook, on um, groups of people who've done it, who've moved to Portugal. I've spent so long. I've watched videos. I was like, okay, I can do this on my own, and I have a pile of paperwork about that thick of copies of bank statements, copies of tax returns, copies of proof of my income, property. The, the requirements are all very specific, but they're not detailed in the lists from the consulate. So from, from lots of research, I've, I've got, I think, what is a definitive list. And when we know we've, when the, the exchange comes through, or the, when we've done the promissory note, and that's when we've actually paid the deposit, when we know the house is going ahead, mm -hmm. I will make an appointment to go to the consulate in London and take our D7 visa paperwork and submit our applications. Mm -hmm. That will give us a temporary visa to go into Portugal so that we can go to our house, and we will then have a second appointment with the SEF in, in Portugal. Portugal with our temporary visas and we take the same paperwork again and submit that and they if approved they give us a stamp to stay for two years okay it doesn't cost very much money to do it and i would still have had to have got all of this paperwork in order if somebody else was doing the application and charging me three thousand euros to do it so they'd have just been collating. They no, they, well, we, they give we, you a list. She would sort of collate it, or just giving it to this they person, and then they go, "Thank you. We have three thousand pounds." They give you the <laughs> list of the information you have to get, and mm -hmm. it's all information that I have to go and find. Yeah. Six months worth of bank statements. Um, criminal record checks. Criminal record checks. Um, so is that a standard CRB? Yeah. Yeah, standard CRB. Yeah. Uh, copies of everything you take. So everything that I've got, I've got in duplicate in case they ask for a copy of it. They might not. Mm -hmm. But I've been from reading other people's posts on Facebook in these other groups that I've joined, I'm seeing that actually they've asked for a double copies of that or copies of this. Or So I've literally, and because we're both divorced and remarried, I've got copies of divorce petitions and remarriages. And... quite a few for you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, sorry Karen. <laughs> you couldn't resist that, <laughs> So I've got copies of every piece of paper that I think they might ask for in duplicate. Okay. And it has been, it's taken a lot of time to do, but I still would have had to have got all of that paperwork and then given it to somebody who was going to charge me 3,000 euros to submit it on our behalf. And, and there's a good chance that, um, the, the, I mean, the consulate, I would imagine, I, I, I can only imagine because, you know, uh, Portugal is a very welcoming country, mm -hmm. in my experience, and they want people to, yes, to this uh, is what migrate we do, there. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they have an ageing population that's decreasing rapidly, so they want people to come mm -hmm. and, and breathe new life into, yeah. their, um, into their country. So That's the other thing, that you don't actually go to the consulate to submit your visa application. Everything is done through BFS. Go. So, so in your um, in your experience, would you say to people that it's something that, that other people can do themselves? Yes. Okay. Because you have to get this. The, all all that an, an immigration specialist is going to do is give you a checklist mm -hmm. and guide you through the process. 
with a lot of, I mean, it's taken a lot of research because there's no definitive, this is what you have to do. Every person's interview is different and loads of people have shared that. And you kind of have to take, it's like looking at reviews, you take a bit of the good and a bit of the bad and try and put it all together and just mm -hmm. make notes. And at the end of it, I will, if I'm successful with our visa application, I will do a list of exactly what we did, copied, and how it went. And Okay, so you um, you have a lovely dog. Of course we do. Yeah. He's, he's hiding. Got, yeah, he's yeah, hiding. hiding. He's hiding from Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, um, what preparations have you made for taking the dog with you? Well... He's got to have his vet check, so we know that much. I've contacted our local vets who will do that. We've tried finding somebody who will transport him for us. Mm -hmm. But again, we've had some extortionate price quotes. Mm. One was four, four and a half thousand pounds. So I don't want to travel with him because it will stress me out. Mm. If, if I see him in distress in a kennel on the ferry or in the car, he doesn't travel in the car very well. So it would, it would distress me if I saw him stressed and that's going to make him more, it's a circular, that's mm -hmm. going to, So at the moment, we found that TAP, um, the Portuguese National Airline, will fly him in cargo from London only. Mm -hmm. so, Bear in mind, he doesn't even like going in the car to the vets down the road. So mm -hmm. what when when I take him, I have, to, I have to walk into the vets. He, he doesn't like going in the car to the vets. So that's that's the least that's the least stressful way to get in there. Okay. But there, there are no flights that go from Bristol to take him, which would be easier, or Exeter. Um, it's got to be a London flight. But you can't book. You have to book your own seat first, and then ring up and book him in cargo. Mm. So what happens if they then say? What happens if they say no? There's no they room. You have to cancel your flight and rebook it. I'm going to hope that. So that's the only, so I did, I did see a lovely lady on Facebook a couple of nights ago who does transportation and I messaged her and was like, oh, are you likely to do be doing a journey in April time? And she's going to message me back. So, okay, so we, we may, we're still, still looking. So, so guys, what things have you found difficult in the process of purchasing your house and who has helped most in this, in this process? Oh, that's interesting. Are you fishing for compliments, are you? Is <laughs> no, that what that no, no, God, no, no. Well, 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 You've been getting the whole thing. You did actually go, I don't know if you actually told your viewers, but you did go and view it for us in secret. I, I, I haven't. Which, of I course. Haven't, I haven't. I, did, I, don't, I don't know if I have mentioned it or not. Stop squeaking. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I have mentioned it. Um, but I have, I did go to view the property and... Um, and I've been absolutely chacking to share, yes, um, to share the videos. And we've had yeah. hamstrung you because the yeah. deal hasn't gone through yet. And yeah. I know you're all waiting for a, a resolution to this. Can you buy a house? Yeah. We don't know yet. Well, we were there for five days. We were still two months later. To talk about, oh, we haven't bought this Has house. Has it been two months later? No, well, no, no. six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. So, um, so it's what not bad though. We only started looking in like, November. We thought, mm -hmm. yes, we're going to do this. And like, bang. It's done. By the end of December, we were in Portugal. Because so, Ginny, I was such a, I'm such a gung-ho fool that I just love this place so much. And I just, I was ready to buy it from England. And I just said, let's buy it. You know, it's relatively cheap. Well, it is relatively cheap for English money. And of course, Ginny being sensible and the grown up of her said, no, no, we must go and view this thing we're about to. So we went and viewed but it. We, we did, I also said we must view others to make sure that we know that that is the one we want to buy. And I did view others. We did view others. Two. Every time you went round, this isn't the same as the first one. This it isn't wasn't the same. No. <laughs> it was different. Yeah. So, so who's, who's been most helpful? Probably you. Yeah. Hmm. And one... Well, two, and you did also put us in touch with an estate there, agent. There were two, and, um, two estate agents. A lawyer, so... Two estate agents that we've dealt with have been really helpful. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll put links down to, to, yeah. to both of those uh, below. One of them's Fernando, and I'm guessing the other one's Paolo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but both Fernando and Paolo have been spot on, really helpful, really good. Um, but obviously, with you going to see the house, we were at an advantage. We'd already seen a video. Mm -hmm. However, when we pulled up outside the door and parked, but when we first went to see it for ourselves, we both stood there and said, 
Is this it? Well, I knew it was it. It looks it look. much smaller than in the video. Mm, yeah. The photographs, yeah. the estate agent photographs, it looked huge. Yeah, that is something you, when you're looking through your estate agent photographs, you've got to be... But even from your videos, it's like, oh, it's smaller than we thought. It is just but, a little bungalow. Really, yeah. isn't it? So what are you saying about estate agent's photographs? Well, they do tend to be a bit, you know, they'll, they'll position it in such a way that, you know... And then you go on Google Maps and you'll notice there's an abattoir next to the house that they just, you know. No, you see, to me, that was a, that was a, a big, big house. house, yeah. Well, I always call it the big house. I think it's a big house. Wait, mm. why is it from the photo? No, no, because when we pulled up outside and we both went, oh, it looks smaller because it looks like a little dollhouse on the hill because mm -hmm. as the land drops away, it looked like it was a little tiny. And it's like, oh. Well, you didn't even recognise it. No, did you? And, and from your videos, it was like, and you'd, you'd walked up this long garden and we were like, Where's that? And it's like, of course, it's a step down to the, and you don't see those things in pictures and in video, even though you've been in video for us. Mm -hmm. To see it for yourself was completely different, but we still loved it. Um, it's it's uh, it's a very beautiful house in my experience. Um, so can you just check that Zach's in shop? Everybody's in shop. I am in shop. Yeah. I'm quite, my nose is like virtually up against the lens here. <laughs> um, it's probably where you can see. Yeah, no, I, I will say that um, that it is a beautiful house and uh, it's a lot larger than many houses in Portugal. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's not as big as houses in England. Uh, and and yeah. also, I mean, yeah. you know, you've got a massive adega, which yes. is the, the rooms underneath. You see, to me, the rooms underneath are, that's his domain. That's workshop territory. Why, why would they? Okay. That's, yeah. That, yeah. So um, I, was, I was looking for upstairs for office space and bedroom Bedrooms. space and the family coming to stay. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's three bedrooms. Mother. Exactly. Of course. Solicitors. Um, so after what you've been through, mm -hmm. um, we looked at, we obviously we needed a, a solicitor over in Portugal and we used the lady that you recommended, mm -hmm. um, who has been fabulous. You need to pick somebody that's on your side, not recommended by the estate agent. Everybody says that yeah. across the board. Never use a solicitor recommended by the estate agent because they can all be working in each other's back pockets. Mm -hmm. Somebody independent, somebody that's got eyes, that's looking at the paperwork and is on your side. Yeah. Somebody completely independent. We use the same solicitor as you. She sent the pictures across and said, is this what you expect? Because I don't think it looks right. And we're like, no, no, no. What about that bit? What about this bit? She has dealt with that. It's been slow. Uh, you know, you might take two or three days before you get a reply to an email. Mm -hmm. But we've had a Zoom meeting with her. I've had a phone call with her. And if I've sent an email saying, can you please give me an update? She does respond. I'm on it. Whatever. She's dealing with it. But I feel like she's working on our side. Mm -hmm. And she's looking at it independently. And I think that is really, really important. Will you or Zach be working in Portugal? Well, I, I will be. I will be working for the UK company that I work for now, but just remotely. Working yeah. from home lot during lockdowns has just proved that we can all do it. We can mm -hmm. all work remotely from home, and I'll be yeah. continuing to do that, doing all the admin and bits and pieces from, from Portugal. Your you, job. Zach? I'm just going to be renovating the house. Okay. Yeah. So, um... How have you found the process of um, getting your possessions from the UK to Portugal now, post Brexit? Well, we don't. We didn't know, know what it was we, like before Brexit, we don't so know what it was, was a doggle. Like you could just, you could go just drive there. Yeah. Yeah. We have wow. spoken to three different firms mm -hmm. um, one in Cornwall, one in the Algarve, and one in Wales. And they've all provided us with quotes based on an average three bedroom bungalow, mm. even though there's a lot of stuff like our kitchen, everything is we're integrated appliances. So we're not taking any appliances with us. Mm -hmm. We're not taking our sofas. There's, it's literally just our base possessions and one little two seater sofa. We're, we're really downsizing. Um, so we've had three quotes and they're vastly different. Um, from four, so three, three and a half, four thousand pounds up to eight thousand um, pounds to transport the goods. Eight thousand pounds. But that includes. You can buy property over eight thousand yeah. pounds. <laughs> that includes um, the going through the 
customs the, yeah. when they get to and that's Portugal. no guarantee you could still if you get pulled um, in customs you could still get tax on or I don't know was it, is it import tax import or? tax yeah. Yeah. apparently if, on if, your if, own possessions if they pull them over to one side and decide that what you're importing isn't just basic second hand possessions they can charge import tax mm -hmm. but obviously we don't know that until our stuff is packed and so, so I'm guessing the one in the in the Algarve is Algarve removal. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which so. is which is what everybody everybody yeah. raves about, and they seem to have um, a really good relationship yeah. with SDF and, and customs. And customs. Yeah, and, so. and I think that's the one we're going to end up going for because which, they they yeah. navigate. They're also the cheapest. They were the cheapest. They were also yeah. the cheapest. Yeah. Um, because they do it all the time. So when are you actually hoping to move then? Well. As soon as possible. If the house goes through before that then obviously we can arrange it all you might have to go the portuguese house yeah oh, no, actually we can't go because we've got to do the d7 visa at the same time and that might take a few weeks to come through so okay. with it's like literally a knife edge of you've got to have the visa to be able to travel we've got to buy the house to be able to go and live there we've got to arrange the transportation of the possessions to get them there so that we can live there. Mm. It's, it's, so, so there's a whole, there's whole chain, there's a lot chain. of ducks that That's you right. to line. So she's no. arranged that how we'll have to if be knocked over. If we're not we... ready for the 1st of April, then it will be as soon as possible after that. And how do you feel about um, sort of leaving family behind? Well, to be honest, my family are all like, my father lives in Spain, so okay. I'm actually moving closer to my father. Yeah. Your brother lives in Portugal. My brother lives in Portugal. Uh, my sister lives in Canada, so there's not much difference there. So you've only got one sister that's still lives. And I've got my sister living, in, in, yeah, who's also been living out in France of late, and mm -hmm. she's just moved back. It does seem like she's moved back, and I'm now moving out. That would be it. But, you know. The biggest... My family's worried about it, so it's not a problem for me, but... No, you're, you're, two, you're two children are in London my, as well. Yeah, all our children are grown-ups, so mm -hmm. um, it's not... But the biggest, the biggest, biggest thing is going to be the grand, grandparents behind. Mm. We've got two down here that we see all the time. Number three is due in June. Yeah. Um, but that's my daughter's having my, uh, yeah, her first um, child in June. But to be perfectly honest, where she lives, to, to visit, it will be quicker for us to fly from Porto to Gatwick than it or will to, to travel London. from Penzance to mm -hmm. see her. So, you know, if, if we travelling to see them, the baby, you know, you'd have a holiday there to see them. And we would hope, with regards to the grandchildren, that... Yeah, they're going to come. They're going to come and spend the summer, so, you know, six weeks or so. We may not see them because they live in the same village at the moment. So we literally see them. Well, they come. They come three, three times. Three, three times a week. They come here after school and whatever. But what we hope is that when we're there, and this is why we needed the space. We needed to make sure we had space when we're there. That we'll say, come and drop them off at the beginning of the school holidays. Come back and pick them up at the end, and they can have a month, five weeks every year with granny and granddad in and we hope to convert some part of the property we're not quite sure which part yet but you've been there you've seen it so but into some kind of accommodation so that if anyone comes to stay they can be in their own little sort of self-contained bit and mm -hmm. not feel that they're imposing on us or so we're hoping we might see them more mm. but that that's the only this will be a new chapter in there you know, we'll yeah. That's what old people do, and they go away and retire in warm countries, don't they? Under the vines and grow grapes and fruit, get into gardening. <laughs> All the stuff I've never done before. Are you going to be as an old person, though? No, no. Well, we are getting old, you know. We are. We are. 55 years old. Yeah. You're ten, 10 years of retirement age. So, do you, do you, do you hope to. Um, is he drinking your He's wine? drinking my wine. <laughs> do you hope to. Hands off my Fino Branco. Thank you. So on that front, um, do you think that you'd be um, tempted to? Going. Do you think you'd be tempted? <laughs> do you think you might be tempted to do your own YouTube channel? Well, I have been tempted. I'm quite happy to be on. Ginny, yours. Ginny, Ginny's reluctant. You know, she'd be in it. I mean, accountancy is not. Sorry, she's not an accountant, but uh, you know, she works for an accountant. Yes, oh, okay. yeah. and that sort of pursuit is not. It's not a it's not a spectator sport, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watching someone do accountancy. Oh, but, oh. <laughs> but you're making my chair squeak, Mr. Tedkins. I know, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of stuff to film. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, when the roof falls in. 
It's already falling in. We're trying to get it to prop it up. That's what I'm trying to do. So, um, if, uh, if you've got an idea about what your YouTube channel is going to be called. Well, I think as we are moving from Penzance and we are moving to Portugal, yeah. we thought we'd go right out on a limb and call it From Penzance to Portugal or from PZ to Portugal or something like that. Penzan from Penzance to Portugal. I love it. Because I, I, I love from Penzance to Portugal because <laughs> only people from Penzance know about PZ. Exactly. That, yes. That's what I like about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then, but then you yeah, yeah. I'd also do as a PZ2, as in a number. But yeah. <laughs> Portugal. Well, it would be, effectively, it would be um, PZ2PT. That's how it would be. Well, that's what we would abbreviate when I do the merch. We'll yes. have that on it. Exactly, that's your merch. <laughs> but, you know, initially we'll go for the. Pen, from Penzance to Portugal. I like that. It's, it's, Our it's, adventure. It's just, um, check the area. That was the other thing I was going to say. Yeah. We did all the research. You know, we looked on Google Maps, we looked at the town, we looked at the town's website, we looked at the Turismo um, websites, we looked at lots and lots of different things to choose the town where we wanted to live. But it wasn't until no, we got That there. is a difficult thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, where do you start looking? Mm -hmm. and, and when we got there, we, we walked around the town. We, we, I mean, we walked, we spent days walking mm -hmm. around, we've driven around, we've... And we shopped in the supermarkets. One of them, which looked really lovely, really swanky from the outside, was like really basic inside, with very, very few, fresh, very little fresh produce. Um, but the other one was... We were there as well in, in New Year. It was January, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were just coming out of... And, and it was a lockdown. Yeah, they had a, a so funny lockdown um, between Christmas and Stay at home, so it wasn't running as it normally did. But we just thought it was a really cute little town. But we still loved it. Tidy. But it, it's, it, that, it's the type of research you can't do on the internet. There's you a, you can't a, do it on the internet. You have to go and see. You have to look. You have to walk around. You have to, to do that research away from the internet. And, and that's what our five day, it was a chaotic visit. Yeah. So hopefully this week you'll find out the definitive... Yes. Um, that what, we, what we looked at is what we're actually buying. That's yeah. what's happened. We've we're found we're hoping it. this week we'll be signing the promissory note yeah. and paying the deposit. And, and, and then, then it will be kind of reserved then, for us. Yeah. And then Vera is going to um, sign on your behalf. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're not going back out there for that, but she's, she'll do all of that with the notary. Yep. And we're hoping somebody will go and collect the keys. Well, I'm hoping we're that's that. Well, well, we're not sure how yeah. that works. The, the, yeah. the keys are handed over yeah. when when you sign yeah. at the notary. So I'd imagine Vera will be. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone, um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have, if you could please hit the like button. Uh, if you could please subscribe. Uh, comment down below. Any questions for any of us? Then leave the questions down below. You can. Come and answer questions if you get Ooh, a moment. Sure, yes. yeah, 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 brilliant. And um, and tell all your friends, and we'll see you very soon. Me and Sarah will be going back to Portugal in April, so um, things will be hopefully we'll getting back to normal in around April time. So um, see you later, folks. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Yeah.